Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today I want to do a video that I guess should have been done a while ago, but I never have all three watches in stock. I hope I held up three fingers. All three watches in stock at the same time. I want to do a video on Seiko flight watches, flight master. Uh, Seiko never really names their watches. It's kind of names that the public has given them. Uh, so the three I'm talking about are number one, most importantly, is the SNA 411, the one that people colloquially call the flighty, uh, I believe. I think TGV actually started that term. Uh, and really when he started reviewing the watch and talking about it, that's when it became extremely popular. Uh, and then there's two kind of lesser known little brothers, uh, the SND 253 and the SND 255, uh, two nice, uh, a blue and a black dial, kind of flight inspired, you know, uh, rotating uh, slide rule uh, chronograph flight watches. Then, you know, nice looking, but again, a little bit smaller, uh, less money, less complicated. Anyway, uh, I want to go over and check those out for you. I'm, I'm still wearing, actually I was filming two videos in the same day, so I'm still wearing the same two watches. Uh, Marathon, Jumbo Day Date, and the Squale Polish Blue. Uh, uh, let's head on over and check out some uh, Seiko Flightmasters. So today I bring to you three of these Seiko flighty kind of watches, Flightmasters, call them what you want. Again, Seiko doesn't really name them. You can call them whatever you want, but flight master seems to be the term that everyone's agreed upon. I've got the SNA 411 here on the left, and I've got SND 253 and 255, which is the same watch, uh, just the dial is a different color. Uh, so what I will do is I will I'll start with um, with this guy on the right, the blue dial, and then we'll make our way over uh, to the black quickly, and then to the SNA 411. So this is the Seiko Flightmaster Quartz Chrono with rotating slide rule bezel and a 12-hour chrono totalizer. Uh, model number SND255, the black one is the 253. Uh, let's go over the size. So it is 41 millimeters in diameter. It is only 10 thick. It's actually fairly thin uh, for a chrono-looking sports watch. It is 46 on the tip to tip, kind of normal. It is a 20 millimeter lug. Now the watch runs on Seiko's 1792 quartz chronograph movement, which is basically just it's your straight start stop reset quartz chrono. Your chrono running seconds or chrono seconds is this big red seconds hand that's not moving. Uh, you have 120th split seconds at the top or 120th seconds. You have regular running seconds for the watch at the 9 and then you have your totalizer at the bottom. I'll go through the operation in just a second. It's got a hardened mineral crystal. Stainless steel bracelet. It's um, the center, central links are folded. The outer links I believe are solid. It has a fold over flip lock friction deployant with some micro adjustment. It's water resistant to 100 meters. The crown is push pull and as with, excuse me, the crown is screw down, um, the buttons are regular buttons that you can, uh, you don't, they're not screwed down unlike one of the flight is going to show you in a moment. Operation of the watch is super simple. Set the time, you can set the date, see that? And then when you're done, you push in and I'm going to have a lot of difficulty turning with my glove, so I'm not going to push it all the way down. Uh, let me zoom in and we'll talk about a little bit of the operation of the watch. So to use the chrono, you press this top right button and the top hand, as you can see, is rotating quickly once a second, 20 clicks a second, it's um, 0.05 increments of a second. The regular chrono elapsed time is skirting around and at the bottom we have this totalizer with two hands on it. You can see them stacked. The outer one is longer, it denotes minutes, and the little one is smaller, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and it denotes elapsed hours up to 12 hours. So this is almost like a running 12-hour clock at the bottom once the chrono is going. So after one minute elapses, we will see the minute indicator go over one increment on its way to 5, then 10, then 15, blah, 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 blah. And then after, I've actually never run it, you know, very long, so I don't know how the hour one increments, if it snaps or if it's a, it's a slow rotation, whatever it might be. Uh, it is a regular quartz chrono, so why don't we watch and see, whoops, figures, right, the focus goes, we'll see what happens, 
There we go. So it just clicked over to one minute. Uh, you would stop it the same way, reset it by hitting the bottom, but let's just keep going so we can keep watching it. And then on the outside is a bi-directional rotates two ways. It is a rotating slide rule. I did a watch and learn on slide rules. I believe I used the Flight Master, I think, for that video. Um, but it is a slide rule nonetheless, and if you want to use it, go right ahead. Uh, I th it's more for show than anything, um, but it is a functional rotating slide rule. Um, so to stop it, again, you like that, and then hit the bottom button, and it resets. And then you'll see this bottom counter will reset itself as well. And there you go, ready to record another event. So this is uh, about 160 bucks or so. Like I said, this is model number SND255. Uh, you saw it said Hardlex Crystal there. I do not know if I said it. So it is a Hardlex Crystal, which is basically more or less Seiko's answer to a slightly harder than mineral crystal crystal. And then the SND253 at the same price with a black dial and black bezel. But same exact watch, 41 millimeter diameter, 70, 92 movement. This is not a Mecca Quartz, if you're wondering if it is. Uh, it is a, you know, one, two, three, I guess at least four motor uh, chronograph. But very nice and extremely affordably priced. So let's, oh, 100 more, I, I said 100 meters water resistant, because now I want to step up to the SNA411, which, you know, in comparison, it just looks so much bigger. But it, I think in size, size-wise, it's not. It's just it's a fraction bigger, um, but definitely a lot heavier in the hand. Uh, definitely a more quality watch, if if I can say that, or you know, feels better built. So let's go over this one next. So this is the SNA 411, and this guy comes in at a lot, around two hundred and ninety dollars. So you can see there's a, a decent increase in price. You know, over a hundred dollars more uh, for this one. So let's go over the specs. It's forty-two in diameter. It's 13 thick. It's only 44 on the tip to tip. It's a very stubby watch, very stubby. You can see that the actual lugs of the bracelet stick out further than the lugs of the watch. Pretty cool. Uh, it is a solid screw down case back. It's still a mineral crystal. Uh, it's a nice bracelet though, as I mentioned. It's oh, it, mostly solid, much chunkier. The central links are multi-part and it is a flip lock push button deployant buckle taking cues from the bambino the lug size is an oddball 21 millimeter um, so your options for a different bracelet for this are limited um, i do know people take 22 bracelets on with straight end links and file them down very carefully you know you could put it on a nylon and make it make it happen but um, again it's only a 21 millimeter so that is kind of strange so this guy runs on the 7t62 movement which still incorporates the chronograph uh, you have a 60 minute chrono up here running seconds but now you've added an alarm feature you've upped it to 200 meters water resistant and Oh, I was using this one before. The buttons are screwed down. So there's little collars around the buttons that prevent you from actuating the buttons unless you um, unscrew them. So when you get the watch and you go to like this and you're pressing and you don't read the manual and just read the manual. Um, you have to unscrew this collar first and you can use the buttons. So I'm going to unscrew the buttons and we We'll go over some of the functionality. It still has a screw down crown, but I know a lot of people like to hear the alarm, so maybe we can maybe we can make that happen. So start the chrono. There goes the seconds hand, and you have a six, 60 minute um, elapsed timer up there. You can see that. You can stop it. You can reset it. Now the manual is very good at explanations, but of principal importance when you get the watch is that you'll notice that this alarm down here, this, <laughs> this dial down here that says alarm is pointing to like 350, the watch is at 350. This is reference time to this. You, these have to be reading the same or else the alarm will not work when you want it to work. So just read that part of the manual before you email and say the watch is a piece of crap. To set the alarm, you pull the crown out one click and you will advance this, the bottom, see how it's advancing? I'm gonna advance it just two minutes and now the alarm is set. To cancel the alarm, I would hold the button down until this alarm time matched that time. 
And while we're waiting for the alarm to chime, let's check out the slide rule. Still bi-directional. Again, this is the one I did the, the watch and learn on a lot of watch and learns ago. Um, it was a complicated one, but I think I calculated tips and stuff on this thing. I, I think it was this watch. Who knows anymore? Uh, but this one does a lot of stuff. I mean, you saw this chrono over here, uh, this slide rule. Uh, this one is just as complicated or even more complicated. I think it has more info on the inner dials to, you know, to make it even more confusing for you. Um, why don't we, what are, what are we waiting for? We're waiting like another minute or so for the alarm to go off. So let's do a wrist shot and maybe while we're enjoying the wrist shot, the alarm will go off. So give me one second. There it goes. The alarm's going off figures right as I put it on my wrist. So let's let it ring for a minute. Okay, so it was pretty loud, right? I mean, I thought it was pretty loud. It was actually kind of annoying. Uh, but look at that. Pl plenty of room for larger wrists. Let's zoom out a bit now that I don't worry about the alarm. And it fits me fine. Not a watch that I would have a problem wearing. Very comfortable. Really sharp looking. I've actually run into people in the wild wearing this watch, which, which I think is kind of wild. Um, <laughs> you don't see people wearing watches that I sell, but I was kind of shocked. I'm like, is that a flight master? He's like, a what? I'm like, let me see your watch. And sure enough, this is what it was. So kind of cool. Just before I go and do the wrist shot on the other flight, I'm trying to zoom in on the back. I wanted to just cover this really quickly. Um, Seiko's being discontinued is like one of the largest things discussed on the internet, but usually is wrong. So it was announced about a year ago, a year and a half ago. The internet was positive. This watch was discontinued. Look at the date on it, the serial dating. It's a 2018 made in July. This watch was made just five months ago, so certainly not discontinued. Made in China? Possibly. Well, obviously, it's got a country of origin sticker on it, but I'm not hiding anything from you. I never said it was a made in Japan watch. The movement is made in Japan, but the watch is not assembled there. Um, but it's just interesting to note that still alive and well, still being manufactured clearly. Let's do a wrist shot of the other guys. Oh, and then I want to do, a, I'm sorry, and then I'll do a loom shot and then I'll be done. So this one fits me absolutely perfectly. It matches my shirt very well. Very nice, comfortable to wear. Cool looking watch. Love that blue. Again, I wouldn't have a complaint about this one. I'm going to do a loom shot and then we'll finish it up. Okay, so before we finish it up, I'll do the loom shot like I promised. Easily, excuse me, both of them are very easy to read. Not a problem at all. Just the sub dials eating up some of the hash marks kind of makes it a little bit confusing to look at. But other than that, I think you can get the gist of it. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you some of the Seiko Flight Master options. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below and I will be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.